Welcome everybody to another Boldcast Reaction. I'm Carson. I'm Lindsay. This is ReZero episode 6. What happened last episode? Last episode, we found out that Subaru is indeed in another time loop, but things went a little <laughs> bit differently, so I have my suspicions about what that means and if there's other people involved. I don't know, he, he died very brutally at the end of the, at the, episode. End of the episode. Yeah. That after was credits. pretty crazy. Yeah, and after credits scene, just got like ripped apart. So uh, he's waking up again now, I'm assuming, and we'll see what happens next. Alrighty. Hope you guys enjoy our reaction to this. If you do, remember to leave a like on the video. It really helps us out when you guys like and comment on our videos. Check out our previous ReZero reactions. We got all the ones up to this point on our channel already. Check out all the other series we got. We got a bunch of other stuff you'll probably like. I've seen the show. Haven't seen it in dub. We're watching it in dub. Lindsay here has not seen anything. We're preparing. We're uh, binging and, and watching the series in, pre in preparation for season two coming out next season. But we'll... We're gonna get into it. Hope you guys enjoy our reaction discussion to ReZero episode 6. Let's go. I'd be freaking out too, buddy. Oh, oh and it was just a dream. <laughs> I guess I came back again. No, okay. Wait. Maybe I should say I made it back. Oh, yeah, I'm you sorry. better be scared. <laughs> Right now. The opening for the third time. It's like they do it every second episode. I kind of like it because you're kind of tempted to skip it every once in a while anyway. So if it only is only shown half the time, it's a little bit more cherished. Probably why I don't remember this as well because it was shown half as much. One thing I really like about them showing like every time, like the added stakes of it being painful to die so he doesn't do it very often is we don't end up with a bunch of stupid montages of him just like repeatedly dying yeah. like a million times. Oh, that's and actually it not a really being, good point. It not be, they can show us in quite a bit of detail every single time he repeats a day. Yeah. And I really like that actually. Yeah, because then you don't run into the trope of, oh, I'll just do, I'll just try everything trial and error a million times. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't, he literally does not want to at all. Yeah. I like Does that. that. Mean I died in my the second time, there was an attacker. So if I was killed, does that mean the other folks here in the mansion were likely targets as well? Because we're involved in Amelia's royal selection, like at the loot house? But even knowing that, I have no proof to explain it or any way to avoid it. But what makes things worse is that I didn't get a chance to see the attackers in vain. Quit pacing around. You're really irritating me. So stop or get blown away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh. She's going in circles around her. <laughs> I thought she was like following him on something spinning. Cut you some slack. We're close now, aren't we? Exactly what sort of relationship do you think we have, I suppose? We're not best friends having only met twice. Just serve some tea or something and let me relax. I don't think I'll serve you anything, I suppose. <laughs> I'll serve you some <laughs> attitude. <laughs> book you're reading anyway. It tells how to get rid of bugs that have gotten into my room, I suppose. <laughs> well, you've got bugs here in the library? So what kind are they? You long exceeded your welcome here, so it's time for you to leave. You. Stop shaking. You can more easily disguise your fear now, I suppose. Wait a sec. When you said bugs, did you mean me? Just get out of here this instant. <laughs> Dies. So you know, I'm from manure as fertilizer all over that flower bed yesterday. <laughs> it's the three-second rule. That didn't count. That didn't count. You were in there for like 20 seconds. We can't hold Puck! How? Magic. Her to cringe, but I got a positive 
this one. <laughs> what could this reaction mean, commentator Puck? She doesn't have very many friends, so she craves things like nicknames and being playful. Really easy to please, you know? Mm. I mean, heroin is easy to please, huh? <laughs> you may have any reward you request. So, simply name your desire and it shall be. In that case, I ask that you let me live here as a house guest and eat and sleep as much as I want. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Tea time, sir. Here you are. Oh, uh, thanks. Want to drink it with me? That's very kind, but no thank you, sir. Hey, you know, if you wanted to be a little friendlier, that'd be fine by me. Well, it is my first day. What do you think's going on? Yo. You come in here every day without even knocking. Is there any magic that can weaken and kill someone, but makes it look like they're just going to sleep? If I must answer, then yes. There is. Are you serious? But it's not so much magic as it is a curse, I suppose. Actually, there are many such things among the spells that shamans specialize in. So what are shamans? Magicians. Must mean it's actually a pretty rare skill then. Well, now that I know, don't suck up that stuff too much, especially for me. With everything I've been through, I die in an instant. I'm really short of blood right now. Yes, all of your organs were restored, but your blood wasn't replaced, I suppose. Not that I have any obligation to do such a thing. When he was anyway. first cut open. Oh. Or fucked up. You know, the way you said all that just now kind of makes it sound like you were the one who magically healed my wounds and saved my life. Trying to take credit for what Neely did makes you look pretty bad. What in the world are you talking about? That silly girl doesn't have the power to heal fatal wounds yet, I suppose. Huh? She and Bubby may have stabilized you and brought you here, but I was the one who used magic to heal you. Huh? For real? Interesting. You're kidding, right? The morning of the fourth day, I'll leave here and. Uh, Pardon my intrusion, sir. You really are studying, sir. I'm surprised. Surprised, huh? Well, that's a pretty rude thing to say. I mean, I am a guest here, you know. You're a freeloader calling yourself a guest. At least that's how I perceive it, sir. Here you go. Thanks all the same. Wrecked. Ugh, it's still nasty. Careful, you're going to incur the wrath of the finest tea leaves in the mansion. Maybe I should import a few fairy tales from my homeland to show you what I mean. Like the red ogre who cried. Uh, the red ogre who cried? Intrigued, huh? You want me to tell it to you? Now, you really need to pay attention, okay? There lived a red ogre and a blue ogre. The two were the best of friends, just inseparable. One day, the red ogre wanted to be friends with the people of the nearby village. He approached, but the people were too scared to get close to him. The blue ogre couldn't bear to watch this happen, so he devised a plan to help his friend. I'll make a ruckus in the village and frighten everyone. When I do, you come and stop me. After that, the villagers will be sure to trust you. The plan worked, and just as predicted, the red ogre befriended the humans. But as time passed, Something he noticed began to worry him. Blue Ogre no longer stopped by to visit. One day, the Red Ogre decided to go to the Blue Ogre's house. The place looked abandoned. The shades were drawn in the windows and the door was shut and locked. There was a letter attached to the door that said, Red Ogre, please have fun with your new human friends and companions. If I continue to hang around you, I'm afraid they might think you're a bad ogre too and end the friendship you sought from them. Thus, I decided to go on a journey. I'm not sure if I'll return, but I will never forget you. Goodbye. Please take care of yourself. Your friend now and forever, Blue Ogre. The Red Ogre read the letter in silence over and over, began to cry, and the tears welled up in his eyes. That's the end. That's a sad story. Yeah, it is. But even with an ending like that, I think it's kind of a sweet story also. If you ask me, all the characters in it are just stupid. The Red Ogre, the Blue Ogre, and the villagers too. I mean, sure, I'm not denying it, but... That's probably the reason why I both love and hate that story, honestly. I'm the type that wants to be rewarded for the effort I put in. Is that really what you think about the Blue Ogre? To me, it's the Red Ogre that I feel is beyond help. He dragged the Blue Ogre into his own desires, and as a result, he lost nothing. Only the Blue Ogre lost him. Then what do you think the two of them should have done? If the Red Ogre truly wanted to become friends with the humans in the village, he should have broken off his horns and gone to them. If he had done that from the very beginning, the Blue Ogre might have stayed. I think you're missing the point. That's a pretty extreme opinion. Answer this. Which of the two ogres would you rather be friends with? Which of the two? The Red Ogre who can only wish to be taken care of by others, or the Blue Ogre basking in his own self-sacrifice? <sighs> what a boring answer. If 
you want to befriend both of them, I can only conclude that you must be the indecisive adulterous type. You'll regret it one day. <laughs> How can you say that? Do me a favor. That story you told me about the ogres, don't tell it to Rem. I'm certain that she wouldn't like it very much. A scary witch. A truly terrifying witch. To even speak her name would chill you to the bone. Everybody referred to her as the Witch of Envy. Oh, he still has his grocery bag. He does? As an attempt I to think so. Three days worth of memories together, I gave you a little something. Oh, hush money, right? I won't say anything I shouldn't. I swear to the dragon. <sighs> Just talking with you makes any evil scheme seem to lose its purpose. <laughs> then, in case you didn't know, in this nation, swearing to the dragon is the highest form of promise. Make sure you never forget it, okay? You got it. Watch okay, and see if anyone set. shows up. I've got a good view of Amelia's room. And now, I'll just wait around for something to happen and stop it. <laughs> Remrem would probably get mad at me for using it like this. Now, what did I tell you, Subaranansky? Even if no one remembers anything that happened when everything repeats, you remember it clear as day. Now that I really think about it, I didn't go shopping with Rem this time just because the food meant for me was left over. It'll still be a while before it gets dark. Come on, focus, focus. What the? <laughs> he set that up. That's pretty smart. I saw it. I saw where the sound of chains came from. But is it coming this way? Nowhere to run. Does this mean I played right into the attacker's hands? If you're coming, come. <clears throat> like a bull. Now, don't you have the nerve to face me? Jesus. Right, so you're Yikes. Self, you damn coward! I've gone through hell trying to see your face, so come out! was it interesting so what'd you think of that episode interesting <laughs> hmm. that was a big episode that was a big episode. that was a big fucking episode hmm where to start with that one let's start with something that's like slightly separate from the story like um so he can now read yes. and write yes which is a good development um he can so he read the fairy tales and he found out that there's actually the the royal family has a pact with a literal dragon mm -hmm. that is to the north Mm -hmm. behind a waterfall mm -hmm. interesting he told a very fitting story about a red and a blue ogre yeah <laughs> completely by coincidence i'm sure he picked that one what do you mean by that what do you mean what that they're red and blue <laughs> yeah oh. and you think it has sig significance to them yeah well yeah but like okay and okay <laughs> okay, okay okay all right <laughs> so <laughs> like rom is the red one right yes yes Rom is like she wants it seems like she she's like way less useful mm -hmm. than Rem but she seems to get a lot of the credit and it seems like she's more well liked her personality is more well liked among other people at least that's what they sort of said we haven't really seen any evidence of that but we've seen that Rem is like super hard on herself 
and is like, oh, I, you know, I, I, I just do, I'm just helping, I'm not that great, I, I, you know, my sister's better than me, like, throwing herself under the bus 24-7, mm-hmm. and I think that, like, that's kind of telling with what Rom got out of the story of, like, she didn't like either of them, I guess. She, she was like, I forget what she said exactly but it was like the red one who is like i guess Mm self-absorbed or like who is like the battle between selfishness and selflessness but the either one in extreme is no good Mm -hmm. and like rem although she seems very like she seems very sweet and oh oh i'm i'm no good but it's kind of a problem as well because she's making herself into like a martyr almost of like oh i am sacrificing myself i am sacrificing so much for my sister Mm-hmm. That that's my entire identity, and I'm go- I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that that holds true. Mm-hmm. I'm very shocked that it was her at the end. I expected it to be Rom. That's pretty shocking. I thought it was going to be Rom because she was in on the whole like, oh maybe we should maybe we should do something about him. Also, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I would call him like Walmart or something. Walmart? (laughs) You're about to call him Walmart? No. Welma? Walmer. I don't know. Like the Pokemon, like the whale Pokemon? (laughs) Anyway. Roswell. I mean, I thought he was evil when I first saw him. And then he was literally just like, oh, you're, you're so nice. It almost makes like any evil plan that I have <laughs> uh, not, not seem like a good plan anymore. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. And I'm like, hmm, sure, buddy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what's going to happen. Oh, also, we learned about the Witch of Envy and how like that terrifying picture of her. She's like, De- demonic looking. Got the pointy ears as well, if you yeah. saw. Coming out of the hair. <clears throat> Very interesting episode. I'm. So what do you think is going... What? Are, why are they trying to kill him? What, what do you think they're, they're trying they to do? They don't want him to interfere with Amelia and her whole, like, claim to the throne and her, like, trajectory. So they think, like, you think, like, oh, he's a distraction. We must get rid he's of him. He's a distraction and also a threat to Roswell because Roswell right now is like, oh, I'm sponsoring you. You're living at my house. You're probably going to do whatever I say because you're a child compared to me. And I'm, like, raising you in this, like, weird way. Mm-hmm. And, and like influencing you and now he's and losing now, that kind of control and he's losing that control he has over her because there's someone else who's also a man which is like competition in like that way and also competition in he obviously doesn't have the same ideals and um probably political views and beliefs and knowledge that Roswell does um Obviously, Subaru is a little bit more do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't like that. He doesn't want Amelia to just do whatever she wants. He wants her to do whatever he wants. I'm this this is kind of what what I'm thinking right Mm -hmm. now. And yeah, so he he, he's a threat to him Mm -hmm. in in any way you kind of look at it. It is interest I'm just still hung up on the fact that it was Rem, Mm -hmm. not Rom. Also, it's crazy that she uses that like chain that that, mace, that mace that's like so long i don't even know how you would wield that <laughs> like seriously how do you run so that it's behind you and then like whip it over your head do you no like idea. fling it around like it's very it's a very interesting choice of weapon <laughs> <laughs> very unwieldy one might say for a maid. <laughs> yeah, a maid just has, like, this huge... It's, it's just so large. I don't know how she <laughs> controls it. Mm. <laughs> oh, we found out that Beatrice was the one who actually healed him. Mm, true. And that Amelia isn't that strong yet. She's not strong enough to do magic like that. Apparently not. Apparently not, which is interesting, because she seemed pretty strong. Mm-hmm. I guess we were going off based off of literally just her. Yeah, just what we know of her. Uh, They were acting differently to him right off the bat. Yeah, when he screamed, when he woke up and he was like, they were like in the corner, kind of freaked out. But then I can't, it's hard to determine whether they know about this time loop as well and they're still going to kill him or if that's separate and they were just 
killing him every night, like, regardless. <sighs> like, it was just the plan all along to kill him on the fourth night. Mm -hmm. Just always. And that's just how it's been working out. Or if they're aware that he is stuck in this loop and he knows that they're evil. Who do you think is in on it? Do you think Beatrice is in on it? I don't think so. Do you think... So you think... So you... Okay, so what, what do you think? What are you thinking? I think it's like an evil trio going on here <laughs> of Roswell, uh, Rem, and Rom. Mm -hmm. Or now that it's Rem, maybe I'm like, Rom maybe isn't involved. Maybe she's cute for that. Mm. It's hard to say. It's, it's really hard to say whether... It's, like, both of the sisters t working together or whether that's, like, kind of separate. Like, because they are very different, as it's, it's already been said multiple times that they're very, very different people. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not entirely sure of if they're both in on it, if they're both ready to just murder him at any moment, if that's not something Rom would want to do, because she said just leave it on that first night. Uh... She said, oh, they're just kids. Leave them alone. Rem didn't seem to have that same <laughs> opinion. Sentiment, yeah. Yeah, I don't th I obviously don't think Amelia's in on it. And I don't really think Beatrice is in on it. Even though she doesn't really like him very much, I think it's more of like, a, uh, it's annoyance. It's not like, I'm gonna kill you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in on a plan to literally murder you. <laughs> Um, also, we're talking about the difference in the way that both Rem and Rom were behaving towards him. It's hard to tell whether if that's, like, from his reaction when he woke up in the morning, or if it's because he chose not to work. Because I think that they both respected him for, like, working and earning his keep, mm -hmm. even though he was bad at it. But they didn't like him what, being, a freeloader. being a freeloader. Like, they called him out and were like, you're kind of an asshole. Yeah. You're just, you're not even a guest. You're just a freeloader, like, living off of somebody else's wealth or something. Yeah. Whatever they said. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Alrighty. Thank you for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our reaction and discussion for this episode of ReZero. Uh, I didn't really have that much to say for this discussion, obviously, because I just want to let you sort of go, and I obviously know it's going to happen. But we hope you enjoyed everything we had to say, everything that happened, our reactions for the episode and everything like that. Uh, hope you leave a like if you enjoyed it, and comment. Commenting and likes really helps our channel out, and we hope you stick around and subscribe for future episodes. We got all the other ones up to this point. We got a bunch of other shows you'll probably like, but with that, I'm Carson. I'm Lindsay. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.